very warm welcome to Globe for Globe, Shakespeare and Climate Emergency. Uh, this may be the second most important climate conference happening online this weekend. Uh, we may not have President Biden and 40 world leaders, uh, but I guarantee we will have a more harmonious and inspiring time over the next two days. My name is Will Tosh and I'm Research Fellow and Lecturer at Shakespeare's Globe and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank and in fact to trumpet my co-organisers Catherine Brokaw and Paul Prescott of the University of California Merced who have been the driving forces of this symposium over 18 months. And also to champion my colleague at the Globe Zoe Morrill who has been indefatigable in preparing for today. Um, I'm going to have a few more things to say about practicalities at the end of this welcome session, but for now I'd like to hand over to the Artistic Director of Shakespeare's Globe, Michelle Terry. Thanks Will, um, and yes, welcome everybody. Uh, as Will has just referred to, I think we're all aware of the huge ple pledges and the conversation happening at the moment on a national and international scale. Of course, these pledges are important and beyond necessary, but systemic and structural change we know also has to be married with the actions of individuals. And in the face of a very real and very devastating and often terrifying climate emergency, it often feels really hard to know where to start. But when you're brave and you're bold and you're willing to learn and you are intentional in your action, uh, then wherever you are is an opportunity to start, is an opportunity to change, and change absolutely starts here tonight. It's so important that this symposium is happening, that the Earth Shakes Alliance is starting, and I speak on behalf of Shakespeare's Globe and the whole globe when I say thank you to everyone who is taking part and who has made this possible. I already know it will inform the stories that we tell, it will also inform the way that we tell them, whether that's in the classroom, the lecture hall, on stage, on film, in a Zoom room. Uh, we are so proud and we are so grateful for everyone giving their time, their talent, their imagination to provoke conversation, ideas, solutions, and crucially, active hope. I love our planet. I love human beings. I have a four-year-old daughter who I have known since she was a seed. I have experienced the miracle of her grow inside me, be born, learn to walk, learn to talk, to practice, to fail, to try again. We're all miracles of nature. And I really believe that when human beings are at their best, they deserve their place on planet Earth. So we have to stay at our best now. Shakespeare is one of the best. And he reminds me daily that there really are tongues in trees, books in the running brooks, sermons in stones, and good in everything and every one. Here's to the most amazing couple of days, here's to rigorous conversation, and here's to hope in action. Thank you to everybody. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, I'm now going to hand over to Paul Prescott. Thank you so much, Will. And, and thank you, Michelle, for those wonderful words. Um, I can't follow that, but I can welcome everyone here to um, this festival, really, of sustainable Shakespeare. I'm speaking to you from Stratford-on-Avon. Um, a few hundred yards over there are what remains of William Shakespeare. Um, and this is the day, of course, that we conventionally celebrate both his birth and death. I want to start with some thanks um, to Shakespeare's Globe, huge thanks to Shakespeare's Globe and to the University of California Merced uh, for collaborating on this project so happily and productively. I want to send out a special thanks to David Bellwood and Zoe Morrill at the Globe, you've been amazing, and to Oliver Webster at stagetext.org for the brilliant captioning work and to Amanda Bavin for tonight's live captioning, which just seems to me an amazing thing to be able to do. Um, I also need to do a special shout out to some amazing students at UC Merced. They are Brandon Cooper, Will Darpinian, and uh, Riley Hoke, and their WhatsApp group name is Editing Wizards, which tells you all you need to know about how, how amazing they've been. 
So we're enormously grateful also to um, all of the 30 or so speakers who are contributing to this conference. It was very important to us when we were designing this conference that it should be free, that it should be a free event. And that means, of course, um, that all of our contributors have given freely of their time and expertise. We won't spend long introducing them in the actual sessions because you know, we're in an emergency, <laughs> um, but you can read all about them and their brilliant careers um, in the events um, page, the WordFly program. We're dedicating this conference to the memory of Emily Fournier, she was a remarkable and inspiring person who founded the Recycled Shakespeare Company in Maine, in the United States. And you're going to hear more about Emily in the closing session tomorrow. Now, to the best of our knowledge, this is the first ever major international conference on Shakespeare and the climate emergency. And I think it's especially unique in bringing together scholars, theatre practitioners, makers, and sustainability experts. I think that, that, that confluence of people is remarkable. We're going to hear from and about people in the Bahamas, in Romania, in Wales, Australia, South India, Montana, and in Serbia. We're going to hear about ageism, adaptation, and the Anthropocene about bees, bicycles, and biophilia. We're gonna hear about caves, cherry trees, and copper mining. I'll skip the rest of the alphabet. We haven't got all night, but you can see what I'm gesturing to is the wonderful variety, the worlds we're going to be taken to in the next 24 hours. Now, as Michelle was hinting, it's, it's very easy to be overwhelmed by systemic problems. We know that the most vulnerable communities, often communities of color, are already suffering from the worst effects of climate change and pollution. And we're deeply concerned, of course, with environmental racism and other forms of environmental injustice. These problems are systemic and they can feel overwhelming. Multinational companies and governments are all too often happy to outsource the responsibility for climate change to us, to individuals. Individual responsibility after all is the default ideology of neoliberalism. And it's all too easy for us to internalize this responsibility to become first guilty, then paralyzed, and then sickly to err with the pale cast of thought. It is too easy, as Hamlet knew, to lose the name of action, but we can act. Everybody here today has three things in common. Number one, yesterday was Earth Day. Today is Shakespeare's birthday. On this day, we recognize that art is one of the best things about being on this planet. The composer Gustav Mahler once observed that life without music would be a mistake. And over the last year, we've been reminded that life without theater is a massive mistake. Number two, we all want to make this thing we love a thing that matters that helps affect wholesale global change, just as it has changed and enriched us all as individuals, because we know that change must happen. To adapt a slogan from eco-musicians, there will be no Shakespeare on a dead planet. Number three, the third thing we all have in common is that we are here to be informed and to be inspired. Now we all know that Shakespeare is the most performed playwright on the planet. Hundreds of companies dedicated to his work, tens of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people making that work, millions of people watching it and having their lives changed. Then we can also be sure of two things. Firstly, that there are efficiencies to be made. And secondly, that there are hearts and minds to be won. 
in the next 24 hours, you're going to hear about how we can use Shakespeare to tell the stories that need to be told now. <clears throat> we need to move, of course, from an extractive economy to a regenerative economy. And the beauty, the beauty of Shakespeare's works is that we can extract freely from them, knowing that we are doing no lasting damage and indeed no damage whatsoever. Now I mentioned um, Shakespeare's remains uh, at the top of this talk. Many of you will know that on Shakespeare's grave, there are some lines of verse. Good friend, for Jesus' sake, forbear to dig the dust enclosed here. Blessed be the man that spares these stones and cursed be he that moves my bones. It's a stern warning against extraction. Some things really should stay in the earth. But there is no prohibition on extracting what we want to extract from the works of Shakespeare, the immortal remains that have long outlived the hand that wrote them. It's time to listen hard to young people, to people of color. And I'm thinking about Greta Thunberg addressing the potentates at Davos. I want you to act as if your house is on fire. I want you to panic, and then I want you to act. In the summer of 1613, actors and audiences at the Globe on Bankside didn't need to act as if the house was on fire. It was on fire. There was no loss of life. And the most colorful anecdote of the event is that of the man who finding his britches ablaze uh, doused out the fire with a handy bottle of ale. The globe was burning then. Our globe is burning now. The first time as farce, the second time as tragedy. The reaction back in 1613 was to put out the fire, then to rebuild with more resilient materials. First we panic, next we act. So in the next 24 hours, we hope that you're all, you're all inspired and that we can all together find the name of action. Thank you and huge welcome to this conference.